So dear students, in this video, we are going to discuss about Newton Rings experiment. So this Newton Rings experiment is very useful for undergraduate students, nothing but uh, this is under physics. So this is useful for the course of engineering physics and also for uh, BSc physics students. Okay. And also it is useful for uh, higher studies also. So now this video will discuss how about the Newton rings and how the shape of the Newton rings will work, it will come. So in detail about the experiment we will discuss. So first of all, as we know, say Newton is a scientist, he is a physicist. He has observed a certain rings, rings pattern based on the phenomena of interference, right? Based on the phenomena of interference. So, as we know, already we have discussed in the previous videos, the interference is nothing but superposition of two or more waves. So, interference is nothing but a, it is a superposition of two or more waves. So then, so how about this superposition of two or more waves are going to happen, that we will discuss here. So, first of all, first we take a source. The so S is a source. So from this source, say there are certain rays. There is a source of light. So from the source of light, so there are rays are going from the source. You can say this is this may be a point source. Then you may use here is a, a collimating lens. So this collimating lens will collimate the light. It is a collimating lens. Okay, so you can take it as a collimating lens, which is used to collimate the light. So, what is meant by collimating, which is producing a parallel beam of light? Okay, so basically, for a point source, there are rays. The diverging rays will be there. So, but this diverging rays, if you use a collimating lens. This will collimate this rays, this diverging rays, into a parallel rays. So that's why we name it as a collimating lens. Now, this collimated light is going to fall on a, a glass plate. It is going to fall on a glass plate. So you can take this is a glass plate. So from this a part of the ray will be reflected from the glass plate of the uh, you can take this is a glass plate for that you can take this is a bottom surface other one is a top surface so from this a part of the ray will be reflected so this reflected rays are basically they are incident they are becoming as an incident rays on the lens they are becoming as an incident rays on a lens this type of a lens is this plano convex lens so there is a plano convex lens on that plano convex lens the rays the parallel beam of light is going to fall how it is falling it is falling normally okay so we know what is meant by normal so generally what is a normal say so there is a you can take this say for example there are two mediums so for that say for example this may be air and this may be glass then you can take this is a normal right so in that way the normal so in that normal the ray is incident that means what is the angle of incidence the angle of incidence is if it is in the normal only the angle of incidence is zero okay so like that but it's not a 90 degrees don't confuse so it is a zero so what is happening the rays, this parallel beam of rays which are incident on a plane of convex lens. You take one more ray from the center, take this may be incident here and it will be further reflected. Basically, you may take this is a 45 degrees angle from this rays. So this 45 degrees is the angle of incidence for this glass plate. Then 
we know that the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. So this theta i is equal to theta reflection. That is law of reflection, right? So what is happening? This 45 degrees, then the next 45 degrees to this reflected ray becomes 90 degrees. That's why the rays are directly perpendicular from this parallel rays. Whereas this parallel, I mean, say so this perpendicular rays are in the normal. They are instead normally where on a plano convex lens. So this is a plano convex lens. Now, as we know that this plano convex lens, the shape is the one side, the top side is clay, and the downward or so the bottom side is a shape is convex. That's why we name it as a plano convex lens. Now, basically, what is there in the laboratory? You have a plano convex lens which is placed on a which is placed on a, a glass substrate. Plano convex lens which is placed on a glass substrate. Okay. So actually, we have mentioned here is a GP, but in our laboratory, uh, basically it was we used to consider it is a glass basically. So what this is a, I mean, uh, it's a glass or you can take it is a in terms of there is a back side, there is a reflection. There is a coating like this. So that's why it is working as a mirror. So what is happening? The rays which are incident, part of the ray, the center ray which is incident, like this, at the center. Then we have the other rays at the ends. So what is happening here? As we know, This is the incident ray on a plano convex lens. So what is happening when the ray is going from one medium to another medium? And say, say for example, here is A and this is a medium, is a glass. Not, not even a glass, it is a plano convex lens. But we know that the lens is made up of a glass. So what is happening basically, the rays which are entering into that glass, obviously there is some deviation from its normal. As we know that, uh, when the, when the light is traveling from one medium to another medium, so there is a refracted ray. That refraction is, it is, it may be towards the normal or it may be away from the normal. That depends upon the a type of the medium from where to where it is entering. Okay. But anyway, obviously there may be a some, some change will happen. But anyway, we are not going to consider here because there is a, because in this picture we cannot show much as like that. But for your understanding, you should feel that there is a change in the deviation. Very little change will be there. It may not be slightly passing through the glass plate. I mean, slightly passing. It may not be slightly passing through this plano convex lens. Okay. Now, what is happening basically? Now, here you see, as we said, it is a convex lens. The center is basically, it is tightly contact with the, lens is tightly contact with the glass plate. So this glass plate is acting as a substrate. This glass plate is actually acting as a substrate. So over the substrate, what is there? Plano convex lens is there. So for this plano convex lens, again, at the center or from the center to up to some region, from the center to up to some region, it is tightly contact with the glass plate. Is it not? So it is tightly contact with the glass plate. Wherever this is tightly contact with the glass plate, there is no air between the, but I mean, from that point where it is tightly contact. So for example, I will take, say from this region to this region, say you can take, this is tightly contact. So there is no air gap, there is no air gap up to some region. But after that, what is happening basically? After that, there is a, some air gap is started and it is started increasing, increasing. Okay. But anyway, we'll see what is happening basically. As like we said, this Newton rings is an experiment which is working under the principle of interference. How this interference is taking place? By division of, by the division of amplitude. Ampli 
field of a waves okay so interference is happening by division of amplitude of the waves hence the result experiment is interference by division of wave frame whereas root and rings is an experiment which is working under the principle of interference by division of a amplitude okay so how this amplitude is take, taking into division say what is happening basically you can see this is the shape of the pair of convex lens is like this so what is happening basically a part of the ray will be reflected from the bottom side of the pair of convex lens nothing but say from here actually these are the rays which are incident here so from this a part of the ray will be reflected like this nothing but from the bottom surface of the plane of convex lens because there is a convex shape right this is a convex shape so from this one there is a reflection you can take this is r1 reflection 1 whereas now the point is whether all the ray will be reflected just from the bottom surface of the plane of convex lens no why because a part of the ray further it is entering into so it may be entering into the air film it may be entering into the air not maybe it is sure actually why because up to here only so there is no air whereas the other point where, where we are focused at this point there is a internal refraction is going to take place because ray is traveling from plano convex lens from plano convex lens into the air film so again what is happening so again what is happening this is basically next boundary nothing but this is next so it is a glass plate so from this again there is a reflection from here so this reflection further it is passing through the plano convex lens so nothing but there are two times there is a reflected wave which is coming one is from the bottom surface of the plano convex lens other one is passing through the air film further getting reflection and coming back coming back into the same side of that you are naming it as a r2 so now how many rays are there there are two type of reflected rays one reflected ray is r1 other reflected ray is r2 so what is happening basically we are going to generate two reflected waves nothing but so there is a ray or you name it as a wave so there is a wave which is further passing it is falling on the glass uh, falling on the tcl plano convex lens that is further taking into reflection so how it is by division of amplitude so this division of amplitude one is occurring at the bottom surface of the plano convex lens other one is further reflected after passing from the plano uh, from the air film okay once it is from the air film then it is going further then it is going uh, further up so that one is called as a r2 so now you have how many you have r1 and r2 actually i am telling repeatedly why because people get confused okay where that uh, two reflected waves were come out that's why i was telling okay continuously repeatedly okay so this r1 and r2 these two waves further they are what they are doing they are further going to hit this one this glass plate okay why because actually as we said the in which is instead normally the reflection is also in the same norm as we know angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so if the angle of incidence is in the normal then the angle of reflection also in the normal right so angle of reflection also in the normal so then this reflected rays so one ray and the second ray okay like this so one ray and the second ray so these two rays they go to interfere so how they go to interfere because they have to what is meant by interference they must be a superposition superposition of two or more waves so this superposition will happen and where we are observing them we are we need to observe them because till now we have discussed what was happened but in order to observe that you need a microscope so for that what you do you go to this rays which are the reflected rays so taking going like this then taking 
for the derivation like this. Okay, so they go up in this way. Then you have here is a microscope. Right? So here you have the microscope. So if you see through the microscope, what do you observe? You observe that there are there are sudden interference pattern is observed. That interference pattern is occurred when you are seeing from here. So you have to see from the up. So then there you need a microscope. So you will get the interference pattern. So how that interference pattern is looking? This interference pattern is looking like a ring pattern. That is what? Since this is a one which is who is observed? Newton is observed. So you are calling it as a Newton rings. You are calling it as a Newton rings. So anyway, I'm not uh, much clearly drawing this picture, but you feel that it is a all are circular rings. All are circular rings. So the shape of the Newton rings are circular. Now the question comes, why they are circular? Okay. So why the circular? Circular because as we know, the air film, nothing but air, between the, where it is there? It is there from the, uh, I mean, in between the narrow convex lens and the glass plate. Right, in between there is a A. So this A shape is circular. How this, why it is circular? You know that there is a uniform, I mean, there is a tightly contact up to some region, as like we said. But after that, there is a uniformly path, path difference, or you say the uniform thickness, which is there between the PCL and, PCL and glass plate. Okay, so this maintaining a circular geometry, circular geometry. So that's why the shape of the, the shape of the, the Newton rings are in circular. Okay, now, okay, fine. As we know, we have seen the Newton rings are circular. Then what is the use of that? So the Newton is observed, the rings are circular rings. The purpose of this Newton rings are for what? Yes, the application which will come, because that is what our experiment, right? So this is able to find lambda. You can able to find the wavelength of the light. As we know the source of light, S is the light source. So this source of light will may be used. And generally we are using the source of light, basically sodium lamp lamp. Sodium vapor lamp. Okay. So this sodium vapor lamp we are using. But anyway, since we know this one sodium vapor lamp, even you can able to find out uh, radius of curvature. Radius of curvature. So this radius of curvature R is basically there is a formula which is dm square minus dm dm square divided by 4 into m minus n into lambda okay so say for example if you know the radius of curvature then you can able to find the lambda value okay or if you want to find the radius of curvature or for a particular plano convex lens you need to know the lambda value as like we said suppose in the newton rings experiment suppose if you take a sodium vapor lamp where you have a lambda 1 and lambda 2, there are two wavelengths, their average is 5893 angstroms. As we know, this is 5890 and lambda 2 is 5896. So their average is how much? 5893 angstroms. So, since we know this lambda, you can able to find the radius of curvature. Of, of whom? Of the planar convex lens. Suppose if you know the radius of curvature of planar convex lens, then what you can find out? You can able to find out the wavelength also. Okay, but anyway, as this experiment is basically is used to find out the radius of curvature of the planar convex lens at this moment. 